Welcome to POTUS Geek. I'm Jared Marks, and in this video we're going to continue to discuss early pregnancy cases. In this particular one, we're going to review a complex adnexal mass and how to apply that into the clinical scenario. As a reminder, when you're scanning the female pelvis, you want to have a sequence for which you obtain the images. It doesn't matter what your sequence is, um, but I do recommend that you start with the long axis. I think that's the easiest way to identify the anatomy. And so as you can see here, I like to start in a long axis, progress to a short axis of the uterus. Then I look at the right adnexa, left adnexa. And then I look at anywhere there's pathology or if there's something within the uterus of pregnancy, I focus on that in the end. This allows me to understand the anatomy of each individual patient as it slightly differs and helps me to not um, miss things as I go and I recommend something similar for you. So for a long axis of the uterus, we're gonna try to identify the bladder and what we do is we place the probe just superior to the pubic bone with the probe marker towards the head, identify the bladder. Then you have this white line down here at the bottom which is your uh, vat vaginal stripe right through here, and then your uterus. And we're gonna see that even in this case, the anatomy is just slightly different than this ideal drawing, but we can um, appreciate the anatomy and what's going on. So here, we're gonna place the probe here ultimately, and what we first see is identify this bladder which is decompressed. The vagina is just inferior to that, and then there in purple was the uterus. And we wanna focus on that anatomy as we fan through, just to make sure we know where everything is and identify anything as we go. So we're gonna fan over to the patient's right. We can see that we don't really see the uterus here, but as we fan from right to left, we'll see the uterus come into view. And then we kind of hit a midline portion, and this is where we can see the endometrial stripe. It's quite thick in this patient, as we can see here, and it's represented in purple. And that's where we wanna look for a pregnancy within the uterus in this long axis. Now as we continue, the uterus is then gonna go out of view as we fan further to the left. Now, after we obtain views of the long axis of the uterus, we're gonna rotate the probe marker so it's towards the patient's right, and we're gonna get a transverse view of the uterus. Now, I like to start at the fundus, so that means fanning superior or towards the belly button until the uterus disappears, and then come back and start to capture images, and fan inferior until you get to the cervix or see the vaginal stripe. Now, in this particular patient, we can see that the uterus is significantly anteroverted. Instead of having that round shape, we're getting more of an oblong shape, and that's okay. That's this patient's normal, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, what we can see is the uterus, the endometrial stripes again in the middle, but we have this area where these red lines represent uh, some anechoic structures, and we really need to pay attention to those, because if this patient presents with pain, um, these could be representative of pathology. So. We can make a mental note as we come back to evaluate those at a later time. So as we fan through, we see that uterus start to disappear until we get inferior and then we just have um, some bowel gas in the way. Now one of the things we do want to note as we're fanning through on this particular case is we see this area where there's a bowel loop up here and usually those aren't identifiable like this but it's because there's a little bit of free fluid right here next to it. And so again we're just going to make a mental note of that. As we continue to inf fan inferior down into the pelvis, we see two anechoic areas. And these anechoic areas are a little concerning because and one could be the bladder and one could be free fluid. So how are we going to tell when we're looking at this? So what we can see is we're going to start with the anatomy that we do know. And what we do know is that that's the transvaginal stripe. And then we have the bladder that's thick-walled here. And so because the bladder's thick-walled, we can tell that that's our bladder in blue and then up above that is gonna be free fluid. Now definitely in this patient that has a positive pregnancy test and abdominal pain, it's definitely concerning that that is blood at this point. And now that we've looked at the uterus in a short axis, we're gonna to progress to looking at the right adnexa. Now it's not always possible, especially in a transabdominal view to see the ovaries, but we should definitely look and see if there is any adnexal masses um, next to the uterus. And so what we can see here is we see a lot of bowel gas as we go through this, but then we start to see this area of free fluid coming back into view. And as we fan down and through, more free fluid in this area. And then we start to see this structure to come into view that looks more solid. And then it's got an anechoic area inside of it. 
Now, a lot of this is blocked, as we see here, by bowel gas and what we call dirty shadowing. But we're going to continue to pay attention here to what's going on. We can still kind of see that mass, and it's right here in the middle of the screen, right through here. And we're just going to follow what's happening with that. Again, it's getting a little bit bigger. We can see it. We can get an outline there. And then this interesting thing is it has this area that's a little bit hyperechoic. Now, that's concerning for uh, clotted blood that's occurring, and we'll come back to that later. This is probably as good as we could have defined this in a transabdominal view at this time. So after looking at the right adnexa, we're going to look at the left. So as we begin to look at the left adnexa again, we want to see if there's any adjacent masses. We may be able to see the ovary. We may not in this transabdominal view, but we definitely want to make sure there's no pelvic masses. Now, in this particular patient, be likely because of what's going on the right, you can see that the uterus itself is um, displaced here. So here's the uterus right here. And what we get is that this is displaced towards the pelvic bone. So there's not a lot of room to see much of the left adnex in this particular view on this patient. So what this means is we've got to go towards, we've got to perform a transvaginal ultrasound. So again, just like when we do transabdominal, we want to look at the transvaginal ultrasound in a particular scanning sequence. And again, I like to do long access, short access, right adnexa and the left adnexa. And then again, review any pathology or uh, pregnancy, whether it's in or outside of the uterus. So if we look at the long access of the uterus like we see here, we can see the same structure in this patient. And what we're going to see is that the uterus is right here. And we do see that endometrial stripe just a little bit better. And then just posterior to that uterus, we do see an area of free fluid that is concerning. Doesn't look like a lot in this, but when we looked at the, uh, the transabdominal, remember we were seeing fluid anterior to the bladder and a small amount in the right adnexa. So this little amount we're seeing so far in this view is probably not representative of what we're going to see. Again, we're going to fan from the patient's right to left. So at the right side, we're going to see the uterus start to come into view as we come across. And we see that endometrium again right there in the middle. And then the uterus is going to disappear, just like we see here. Now, because we don't always see the uterus and cervix all together in the long axis on a transvaginal, we're going to come back and center ourselves to the middle. And then we're going to angle the probe posteriorly in this patient that has an anterior verted uterus. And what we see here is we see the uh, endometrium in the cervix here. So just to point out that cervix right here is the posterior portion right through here and then the anterior portion. And it is a little hazy but that's where it's at on this. After you've looked at it in a long access you want to progress to a short access. So with the probe marker uh, aimed towards the patient's right we are going to obtain a view like this and we'll see that fundus typically in more of a round shape. We don't have as much of that trouble of a anterior verted uterus looking like an oblong shape. And so as we start to fan down through, we can start to see a few structures. So this is just above the, the fundus and we see again, there's some bowel gas through here or bowel. And then we see over in this area, we see two anechoic structures and that would be concerning for free fluid again that we saw earlier as we try to quantify that. Now as we progress, we're going to see the uterus come into view and we see the uterus right here in the middle and then we see these two areas of anechoic structures concerning for that free fluid and we'll continue to see that free fluid and uterus as we scan down. So there again, there's our free fluid. Here we see the uterus again in the middle as we progress inferior to the cervix and over onto the left side of the screen you can see areas of free fluid still. Then we start to see this structure come in and we see two areas of uh, free fluid or well not free fluid anechoic structures. Now this could be uh, free fluid or it could be contained fluid it just depends on what cut we're getting. Right now at least the one on top looks like contained fluid in a structure but we'll see how the ultrasound progresses. And then again, we see an area of free fluid here, uh, just deep to the cervix. Now that we've looked at the uterus in a short axis, we're going to angle the probe over towards the patient's right. This is an image of an ideal view that we can see the ovary with a little bit of the uterus in view and the iliac vessels. The ovary is going to be typically medial, um, 
to the iliac vessels if those are visible. Now in this particular patient, what we do see is we see the uterus come in here and then we see a large amount of free fluid. Now over to the left, we start to see again that adnexal mass that we were looking at before with some adjacent bowel gas. And as we fan through this area, we're gonna see that this uh, structure is quite large and has surrounding free fluid to it and then has this anechoic structure to it right here in the middle. So that's the structure we're looking at, some free fluid, and then we have that anechoic area. So again, we can see just more of that image. Here's a, another anechoic structure. This looks contained and then ha appears to have some free fluid deep to it. Same thing we see here. So now we can see this with two structures in it, one that has a hyperechoic structure and then one that has an anechoic with some free fluid. And then we finish looking at the right adnexa as we look here. After we've evaluated the right adnexa, we're going to shift over to the left adnexa. So this is angling the probe over. You continue to keep the probe marker towards the patient's right as you angle towards the left. And we're going to evaluate that again. Now before, we did not see a lot. Now what we may have here, uh, it looks like we got some free fluid here. And then I, I put a question mark over this anechoic area. In this image, it's likely the interior iliac vessels or the iliac vessels. It's hard to tell with the cut being uh, blunted like it is or shortened. Now that we've looked at this, so what are we thinking? We're, we've got a right adnexal mass with some free fluid. And like I said before, we want to come back and look at the area that's of concern and just make sure we're not missing anything. So as we come back through this, we're going to take a second look at the pathological area. There was nothing in the uterus, so there's no need to look there again. But we're going to evaluate this. And what this looks like to me is an ovary uh, with a complex adnexal structure, which is problematic in a patient with a positive pregnancy test and pelvic pain. And so as we look at this a little bit closer, uh, ignoring somewhat the uh, anechoic structure on the right, probably a simple cyst on the ovary, we see this complex structure. Looks like it's on the ovary to me, um, but it's got some um, hyperechoic areas, which is concerning for hemorrhage. And then we have this large amount of free fluid in the pelvis which is definitely concerning. So I'm gonna let you watch a video here, fanning through that, showing uh, what you're looking for as a possible fetus or yolk sac, or anything else you can define within this structure. So in the end, what is this? So what it looks like, what we're gonna define this as is, there's no definitive IUP. What we do know is that we have a complex adnexal mass. So what could that be? That could be a ruptured ectopic pregnancy or a hemorrhagic ovarian cyst is what would be my two leading diagnoses in this. And then we have a large amount of free pelvic fluid. Now this is problematic in a pregnant patient and um, this really is not a continued sonographic diagnosis. Right now this is speaking with a consultant or uh, with the gynecologist if you aren't one or if you're an emergency physician for example as I am. This is talking with them and discussing the risks and benefits of that patient. And what I would really um, argue that you should be talking about is doing a laparoscopy on this patient so that you can evaluate whether this is a hemorrhagic cyst or if this is an ectopic pregnancy. And that's exactly what we did in this case. The gynecologists come down and um, even performed a bedside ultrasound themselves to further evaluate and felt they couldn't delineate between the two and took the patient to the OR for a exploratory laparoscopy. Fortunately for this patient, she ended up just having a hemorrhagic cyst and um, continued to have a normal progressing pregnancy after this. I hope you found this helpful as pregnancy ultrasound can be somewhat difficult. Um, but hopefully this was educational. If you have any questions about this or other point of care ultrasound issues, uh, feel free to email me, email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or you can follow me on Twitter at pocusgeek. Take care.